born again. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm married to one wife uh, who is a lady. Uh, and her name is Favor, and we are blessed with a son, and we are fulfilling God's mandate. Praise the Lord. We have to dominate, have dominion, be fruitful, and multiply. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, as I was saying, we, we've been reminding ourselves and, you know, trusting God to uh, bring this reality that he uh, made no he you know he revealed to us by his spirit and through his servant that we need to have our hearts united you know having one mind one one heart an undivided heart praise the lord forgive me if you hear my voice very fiery uh, I, I, I pray that God will give us grace today. Amen? Amen. Uh, we had a great opportunity to also go and minister this week. No, on Friday, there were two teams. One was going to Zima Center with Pastor Fuaya, and another team was going to Moranga University. And the Lord gave us so much grace. Amen. I know Pastor Fire will give us more reports about Uzima Center. Uh, Moranga University was full of God. Amen. Five souls came to the Lord, celebrate Jesus. Amen. And two were filled with the Holy Ghost. The rest of them, they just poured their hearts to the Lord and they decided they will walk a life that pleases the Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for what he's doing amongst us. Amen. Uh, and for giving us servants, shepherds after his own heart. Praise the Lord. All this is that God and through his son Jesus Christ may be glorified. And we as his sons, we may glorify the Lord Jesus Christ as he makes us to be his perfect bride. Tell your neighbor you are a perfect bride. Eh, si tumeimbo umekamilika. Yesu amekamilika na ametukamilisha. Bwana asifiwe. So uh, I just wanted to say that because as I was trusting God for when I, when Pastor James told me that I need to come and pray and release the word of God to us today. I was laboring and asking God, so what is your mind for us today? Because every time we gather, there is something the Lord has for us. And he's very intentional about us. Praise the Lord. Ask your neighbor, do you know that the Lord is intentional about you today? A amen. So I, I just want to uh, stand on that foundation and just build on what... Uh, our dad already laid on us through uh, the grace of the Lord. And today, those who are writing, you can just title it First Love. Praise the Lord. I want you to turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, when did you first experience First Love? Uh, have, you, have you ever, do you remember the first time you thought you, you know, you had encountered, and you were madly in love. Praise the Lord. I'm wongeleshani. Hey, ninja mujayi pendana na kupendwa. Yeah, praise the Lord. I remember the first time. Uh, I don't want you to judge me, please. The first time I, <laughs> I fell in love. I thought that I was in love. I was in class six. Uh, some of us God has worked on us properly oh. if Pastor James can Pastor give you James. my story you will be shocked yeah, praise the Lord if you see some of us just some of us God has worked on us God properly for Pastor James it's because we know if there are Pastor some people God give you, you like you see 
God knows where he wants you to go and it's very far and there are people that he has ordained to bring you or rather to carry you there. Praise the Lord. My mentor usually says, um, where you want to go, uh, there are people living there. Praise the Lord. Tell, tell your neighbor, where you want to go, there are people already living there. So God places men. People, if you don't have a revelation of who, of who they are, you may easily dismiss them. Because they don't look the part. Praise the Lord. But they are ordained for your destiny. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, you know, even Peter, Jesus actually told him, it is not flesh and blood that has revealed that to you that I'm the son of the living God. You know, you cannot have that kind of a revelation by flesh and blood. You can imagine when they are coming to arrest, arrest Jesus, you know, Judas had to <laughs> go and kiss Jesus. I mean, after doing all those miracles, feeding 5,000 people, I mean, if I had 5,000 sitter here and I'm feeding 5,000 people, I mean, sineza smama MCA na nitaku at least nakakiti. You know, at least I have some form of recognition. People already know who I am, sinio? Hello, are we talking? Hello, praise the Lord. Yeah, so, but you find out that for Jesus to have been identified and arrested, eh, Judas had to come and, you know, kiss him so that they may know, you know, that this one is, a, this one is Jesus Christ, the one that is called Jesus of Nazareth. You know, he had to identify him. Squeezy, we are living in a very funny dispensation. You know, last month, mtu wakwe na ki rope. Unajo kona ki... Na ito aje. Watu wame kuja na entrolage. Na ito entrolage, amini ito nini. Wana kufuata na magari. Wana kuekea vitu kubwa. And then now you are known as the man of God. I mean, Jesus, they had to do that. Actually, when they appeared at the Garden of Gethsemane, they had to ask, we have come for Jesus of, <laughs> who are you looking for? Jesus is asking them, you know. And they say, we, we have come for Jesus of Nazareth. There's so much in that particular text that I don't want to go because it might unravel another thing. But today I want us to labor on that first love. I want you to note down something. I write it down. Take a survey. Are you writing? Quickly. Write down, number one. Note down, uh, before you do that, do you remember the first time you got born again? Ask your neighbor, do you remember the first time? Some of you remember even the date. I don't know the hour. I don't know how much the time is. Ask your neighbor, just, just, just ask your neighbor, do you remember the day you got born again? And if that, that neighbor is not born again, ask, ask them, do you want to get born again? Uh, uh. Now, after you've done that, I want you to note this down now. Number one, note down, if you can recall, eh, all the things you viewed, or rather, you know, the things you did the first time you got born again. If you can recall the things you are doing and how you viewed life, the first, that first time, that first encounter with the Lord, what did you, if you can recall, just write two things. Just two. Don't write many. Just write two things. Have you done that? Have you done that? Number two. Not down the things. Now this is not down the things or spiritual things that you are doing now that you never did when you first met the Lord. Did you did you understand? Did you hear what I said? Not down the spiritual things. Hey, what wengine walikuja bila kalamu na kitabu tafadhali andika pahali. It is good. It will help you remember. 
not down the things or the spiritual things that you are doing now, that's number two, that you never did when you first met the Lord. In other words, there are some things that have, there are some acts of faith by the grace of God that, you know, that have sprung up over time. You are, you are not able to do them the first time, but now you are able to do them. Yeah. Two. Number one, the first one was the first, uh, the things that you, the things that you are do, the things that you did <laughs> and how you did life. That, that was the first question. That was what you were writing. The second one, the things that you're doing now that you never did when you first born, get, got born again. Number three, is it making sense? I'm, I'm, I'm confusing you. Okay. Not down, number three, not down the not so spiritual things <laughs> that you are doing now that you never did the first time you met with the Lord. I'll repeat. Not down the not so spiritual things that you are doing now that you never did the first time you met the Lord. In other words, if you can recall that time you used to do those things, they are, they are, they are not so spiritual. Yeah. They are not, you know, you are doing them now, but you never did the first time. Right now it's, it's like you found yourself in a place you don't even know how you are not able to do the first things. Is it making sense? Uh, so it's like the first time there was some, something you were doing by the grace of God, but now you wonder what happened. You know, those things then, it's like I was able to do them. Of course, it was by the grace of God, but now you're not able to do them. Have you done that? Can I repeat from number one? Number one. Not down if you can recall the things you, you did or how you viewed life the first time you met with the Lord. Number two, not down the things that you are doing now that you never did. There's a difference between number one and number two. The things that you're doing now that you never did the first time. You met with the Lord. And then number three, the not so spiritual things that you're doing now that you never did the first time you met with the Lord. Have you written those six things? So two, 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 yeah. And then now I want you to just rate your relationship with the Lord. Rate, rate, just rate yourself in simple. Where are you with the Lord How can you rate yourself? As in, how would you say is your relationship with the Lord? Yeah. Where are you with the Lord? Amen. Now, one of the things we need to understand is that this thing called love after you've done that, I just want you to go and think about it. Sela. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, Sela. Uh, just go and think about it. Um, that's not my sermon today. I just wanted you to just take a survey of your love, the relationship you have. Because every relationship, there are some factors that determine whether a relationship works or eh? Situonge. Whether it will work or not. Eh? And it's very unfair for you to do some things and expect some relationships, that relationship to work. And you know that it cannot work like that because the parties involved, or rather the party involved in that relationship, one party says, this is how I view things and this is how I would want you. There's some expectations, you know, all that, so on and so forth. But you as the person, you decide, well, see, you love me. Ne never, nevertheless, I mean, the, our relationship will work, you know. Over time, that relationship will not work. Uh, it will just go down the drain. 
our spiritual dad, uh, father, Pastor James, uh, the, when he was counseling us when we were getting married, he told us, when you're, when you're thinking about getting married, you have to remember that it's a life of lying, you know, laying, it's laying your life down. You know, you have to accept that you will lay your life down. As in, there are some things that will have to die. Praise the Lord. It's a, it's a lifestyle of sacrifice. You cannot be able to have a successful relationship and still have your way. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Now, we thank God because we were not the first people that started this. Eh? One Swali moja enye Pastor James huwa natuuliza o enye alituuliza the first time. Nani alianza kuchokoza mwingine? Eh, Siji kama hivyo eh, ndiye alituuliza. Nani alianza kuchokoza mwingine? Of course mimi ndo nilianza kuchokozana. You know. Eh, so it starts it has to start with some it starts to start from somewhere. Praise the Lord. Inaanza somewhere, si ndio? Now we are not talking about relationships here. You know, man-based relationship, though we will get there. But I want us to focus on this first love. That's the title, first love. This love that we are talking about is not, it did not spring from us. It started from God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that it is God who started this whole thing. Actually, in Roman, Romans chapter 5, verse 8, you can go there quickly. Bear with me, I'm recovering from a funny flu, but I have dominion over it. Amen. But, can you read together? But God... Okay, let's read loud. But God demonstrates his love, his own love towards us, in that... While we were still sinners, Christ died. Amen. Can you read it again? But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So this thing started from God. It did not start from us. Uh, some time back when we were doing evangelism, when you go and just speak to somebody and I me, me, me napenda God. Me, me napendanga, you know. But, you know, they have confidence that they, they know that they love God or rather they think they love God. But the way they are li leading their lives, you cannot see the pattern of God or the mind of God or the image of Christ in their lives. But you thank God, because by our own, we cannot do it. Actually, it should be like that. Praise the Lord. You should never come to a place you think you can do it by your own. You can love God by your own. Even the Israelites they tried it, and they failed. Because by human nature, we are prone to resist, you know, to just defy this sinful nature, this old man, always wants to defy the mind of God, the spirit of God, the will of God. So, naturally, man cannot be able to love God. Are we there? Are we together? So, God, so it fits. Because the first time he Man, commandments, they are good and they are everything, but now they kept on failing and failing and failing and failing. But God had an agenda. Because before even all these things, before even we fell, the agenda of God was us. Tell, tell your neighbor, you are God's agenda. You, you were in the mind of God before even your parents thought about you. God had an intention 
of doing something through you, even before your parents thought you are going to do this. I don't know if you are like me. Me, you know, I was told, hey, Ed. Nasema, mi nataka kufanya muziki, unaambiwa muziki ukue nini. You know? Hii ndi utafanya, ndi ufanya hiyo nyo umeitua kufanya campus. You know? Uh, but God had, God had a great plan. The Bible says for he, for, for God has, for he has Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, let's go there. I think it will help us. Jeremiah 29:11 For I know the plans that I have for you says the Lord plans of good and not of and he, he already has the agenda the thought he already knew what he had and he wants for you he already knows why he allowed you to be born in that kind of environment the best thing and the best place to be at as a believer is to know that you are loved by the Lord. High five your neighbor and tell your neighbor you are loved by the Lord. Eh, hey, you are in the mind of God. Even if you've been in a place and somebody has told you, you know, or rather they have implied, they have done some actions to you that implied or you know made it look like they don't love you. God is very intentional about his love for you. That's why he says that while, he, while we were still sinners, you know, God demonstrated his love. When he gave his own son. Praise the Lord. God would want us to be perfected in this love. God would want us to love, or rather to experience this love in full measure. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyone that comes to this encounter of love, I know you've been to worship encounters, worship experiences, but I pray you have a love encounter. The love of God. Let's read John 4.18. We'll read a series of John 4.18.19 John John, John, John 4.18. Am I in the right place? John 4.18. For you have had five as one. The one, yeah, I know. Ebu, go to First John, sorry. First John. First John. Thank you. There is no fear in... Uh -uh, can you read together? There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been perfected in love. Continue. We love him because he first loved us. Continue. If someone says I love God and it's his brother, okay, let's go back. We'll come back there. So, anyone that has experienced the love of God, can we agree that there should be no fear in your life? If you have come to the place, truly you've encountered the love of God, then his mind, his thoughts, and you know, you don't have to go very far to know the thoughts and the mind of God. It is in the word. So every time you read the word of God, and this is the revelation by the spirit of God that is shown to you about the mind of God for you. If you have been perfected, you will not be fearful in that particular light or that understanding. You will know that this is, my, this is the love of God for me. 
Anyone that is perfected in the love of God, there is no fear. The moment you hear the word of God, but you fear that you will lose some things if you heed to that word, then you have not been perfected by his love. If you will always have second thoughts about his agenda, the word of God proceeds forth to your heart and you know this is the mind of God for you. Yet, you doubt or you decide, let me just do it to some extent or rather you just do it to some extent. Then you have not been perfected. You are afraid it will cost you something or rather you know there are things you will lose. And the problem is is, it's not that you don't know that you will lose them. You know there are some things that will have to go when God comes in, in a particular situation. But the problem is we love some things very much. Would rather retain them but still have God. Do you remember dualism? You still want to, you know, have God. Ah, love God. But these things that he's telling you to live and cleave to him. Lord, you are so full of mercy. You understand. You know, just understand. I have brought, you know, I have paid the pay. <laughs> I, have, I have come this far. You know, I've done so much. Why would you want me to let go of this? Let me give you a perfect example. I love using myself as an example. 2019. Where is Doris? Oh. We recorded a song and Doris was one of my backups in 2019. And it was about the love of God. But that song came from a place of being broken completely. I was so crushed. And it came from a place where I had written some very good songs before. Before, before that, before 2019. And they were, they were not spiritual songs. Uh, some of us are umananza <laughs> kunyangali. Hey, they were not. So, I, I had even made some good connections. I, I had connected my, myself with very good, actually one of the top producers in the nation. And he saw the songs and I wanted to record them, but I was battling whether to do it because I knew God is telling me this will not please me. This will not bring glory to me. But I knew these ones will make me rich. These ones who make money. Ah. And then to make it worse, that top producer, I will not mention the name, he actually said, Davis, eh, Sasa Uta decide. You have to decide. Unataka kuingia gospel, ama unataka kufanya ingine. Kwa sababu, vile inaka, you don't really need to beat yourself. I know you are born again. Uh, you don't have to do the songs. Let's do this. We can sell these songs. I will connect you. I know people that would want these songs. We sell them to them. You, or rather you sell it to me and then I'll give it to them. Or you can even sell. So in my mind, I'm like, ii, kombe ki kitu kineza kuwa siria sivi. It's like, you can, we can, you can sell. People are doing it everywhere, everywhere. Konza na niembe you know. You'll not be the first. People write songs and they sell. And then, he told me, uh, what do you think? So I was like, let me go think about it, and then I'll give you feedback later. So I went, sat down, and I was battling, battling with this, battling with this. I sent, I sent a, a letter to Eric Wanaina, and then he replied and told me, I know what he 
saying, but just let me send my producer and see how we can connect to you in another way. So, I'll take you to it. Sasa mungu, hii ni yako. Hii vile inakaa kwa ngomu menipangia mambo mzuri. This one. And you know, being a household name, you know who that guy is. Hey. So I was like, God. And then I went, sat down, and decided, let me pray about it. Okay. Before even I could pray, I just had the Lord tell me, go to your laptop. I had the songs there. Go to them. I saw them. And then he said, delete them. God, God, what do you mean? It's like, no, these ones will not bring glory to me. So you have to decide whether you will serve me or you will serve this other, one, other side. So you decide. I don't know. Probably you guys have different experiences with God. Everyone has different experiences. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so that was my encounter. And I had to decide whether I will let go of those songs and mind you, the producer is waiting. Yeah. Two now. So there is this, this very renowned producer, and then there is this other one that I've mentioned. So they are both waiting. They are actually emailing me for the response. Because these are not people that take a lot of time. You don't waste them time with them. They come, you either take it or you leave. <laughs> they have a lot of things to do. Anyway, so... I had to make a decision very fast. So I'm seeing the emails, and then God's agenda is here. So it's like God is here. So, are <laughs> so I have to decide and make a quick decision. And I was like, I, me, God, I don't know. So I decided, ah, let me delete. God, God, God will make a way. It's okay. So I deleted them. I deleted all the songs. And then went, I was like, okay, and sour. But at the back of my mind, I knew what I had done. I knew what I had done. So I went and told God, God, you said I delete these songs. I have deleted them. And I know you have good plans for me. Uh, so what is the next step? God was silent the whole night. Then in the morning, I, I go to work and then I yeah, I had a habit of just when I get to work, I open my laptop and then I start praying fast. So when I prayed, God told me, go to your laptop. Like, okay. So I went. I knew I deleted them, but at the back of my mind, I knew what I had already done. So God told me, go to the laptop. Open. Open the recycle bin. So you know if you delete Bukuna Badotu's files in Endanga, Unesa recover. Unesa bad re God wanted me to deal with them completely. As in the atelier, the archer the end. Ask your neighbor, what have you laid down? So I had to delete them again. Praise the Lord. Let's read John fifteen thirteen. No, before you go there, let's go to Luke. Luke, Luke 14, please. Luke 14, verse 23. That was the hardest time I've ever had. If you go and listen to that song on my channel, you will know where I was at that time. Luke 14, in Aitwa Luke 14, 23. Then... The master said to the servants, no, 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 yeah, 14.23, go out into the highway, um, no, no, get me that scripture that says, if you love me, if anyone does not love, no, if you if you love me more than you love your father and mother, you must hate your father and mother. Something. I think I got, I was writing, there were so many word, you know, scriptures coming in my mind and I wrote it maybe wrongly. Get, get that scripture for me quickly. Yes? Yeah. 
verse 26. Oh, so we are still, okay. Verse 26, thanks. So in Luke bad 14, but, but verse 26. If anyone comes to me, can you read it together? If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be, continue. And whatever he does not, or, and, also, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my, continue. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Uh, this knowledge and wonderful opportunity of walking with the Lord has a price. Praise the Lord. Even Paul was saying, I press on. If you can get that scripture, you should be getting it. I press on you know, to the mark of the upward calling in God, in Christ Jesus. You know, there is something you are seeing. So these other things, they are not worthy. Eh? There's, a, there's a time Paul was saying in one of the letters, I reckon that the present, the sufferings of the present times are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. You know? So, he says, I do not count myself to have comprehend, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Now that you have come to the Lord, what are you looking for? What is your goal? Did you come to the Lord so that he may do something for you? Did you really get perfected in this love? Do you know what the agenda of God was for you when he brought you to this love? Praise the Lord. I know it's nine and those ones who are going for discipleship class can just, it's okay, you can go. When I was thinking about this, it really pierced my heart. And I was, you know, trying to think, labor, you know, and ask the Lord, Lord, am I really in your love? Praise the Lord. The agenda of God from day one was, can you go to Genesis chapter, chapter 1? You know, if you want to know how it starts, you go to the beginning. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 1. In the big, verse 27, sorry. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then God blessed them, and God said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. God had an agenda when he was creating you. This was the agenda. So he has a plan. He has created the heavens. We are in 21st century. There are things that God intends for us to do. You are blessed to be in this century. There are some when you are saying, oh, to us, we are in the 21st century. You didn't have social media. But you know you are in the right place. You are just in the right place where God wanted you to be at. Praise the Lord. You are not in the wrong, you are not in the wrong century. You are not in the wrong time. So one of the things you need to understand is why am I, why did God bring me to this century, to this time? Now, God has allowed you to be in 2022. 
are you doing this? I know this has been broken so well by our dad. The spheres. Are you having dominion in the heavens? Are you having dominion on the earth? Are you having dominion in the waters? Over every creeping thing. Because you bear the image of God. You know, that's why even as much as Adam and Eve fell and they lost their place, God was very intentional because they bear his image. You bear the image of God. Praise the Lord. You can imagine if you come to that understanding. How much less time will you spend doing a lot of effective work than doing a lot of things for a long time and then end up realizing, oh, but that was not what God intended for me to do. That's why you cannot afford to start your day like a worldly person. You have to inquire of the Lord and knit yourself with the agenda of God for that day. Blessed be the Lord because some of us, God has placed us in the marketplace. Some of us have their own businesses. When you arise in the morning, you have to align yourself with the agenda. You have to reign and, domin and have dominion as Christ intends you to have. Because you bear his image. You bear his image. In a particular day, there must be the image of God seen in your life. From morning to evening. For we do not have our own life. We have nothing of our own that we can glory. Praise the Lord. So he created them. Go up verse 7 just a little bit. In the image of God. The Bible says Christ is, is the image of God. So Male and female. And you know, most of us, I know we, this scripture, especially and oh, now for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall. And you know, we love that one, when, especially when it's read in the wedding. Because that's what uh, mostly, mostly, what comes in your mind, especially if you are single. Unangalianga sasa, God. Potential ni nani sasa. Ju sasa umeonge imambo. Na nangalia. Maybe unikitu na niambia. You know, most of us when you get to weddings and those scripture, you know, when it comes. And they say, you know, he created them and he blessed them and you shall be fruitful and all that. When you come out of that wedding, the thing that is in your mind is... God, about that young man. Ile message alituma. Alikuwa na manisha. Ama alimanisha hivi. You know. Is it, is it that you are saying that it's my time to get married? Ama, ama ni yeye. Ama uyo ni the will of God. You know, that's what usually is in our mind. But you know, when God was doing this, he was actually showing, a, it was a shadow of what was to come. What Jesus would come and do for us. Both were created in the image of God. I love that scripture that says, and Adam said, these shall be the bone of my bones, the flesh of my flesh. Even after, you know, naming all these animals. And then he said that. And you know, the agenda of God was for us to come to that realization. That we are, we are the ones that are supposed to be knitted with Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tukopamoja. Tukopamoja. I hope I'm not speaking over your head. This particular scripture was written as a symbolism of Jesus and his bride. 
the church and Jesus Christ. This has nothing to do with man. This has everything to do with Jesus and his church. Praise the Lord. Jesus decided he would die to purchase us. He would pay the price to ransom us. He would go out of his way to bring his bride. We did not come from our own. We sprang up from Christ. Praise the Lord. How many are born of the water and of the spirit? How many are born of the blood? They have been washed by the blood. They have been purchased by the blood. When that soldier pierced Jesus at the side, what came out? Yeah? Blood and? What came out? At that particular time, Jesus was asleep. The church was coming out. Jesus and the bride is the agenda of God. God wants us to share in the inheritance that we have in Christ. That's why the Bible says we are co heirs with the church and Jesus. The bride must be able to submit to the groom. The groom has gone out of his way. I love, there's a scripture that I keep reminding myself. You know, that, that's why I have to honor my wife. You know, the Bible says, honor them because they are co-heirs with you in Christ. You see, us that are married, is not, we don't represent our own. We are a symbolism of Christ and the bride. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So even when, that's why you cannot just afford to decide, you know, think of who, ni nani, nani ni huyu. Lafu na mochukua. Ama unafikiria, ni nani anaka potential? Nani anaombanga vizuri sana? Nani anaka akosawa? Nani ana, ana, ana niongelesha vizuri vile ni nataka? You know? It must come from the Lord. Because you will bear the image of God. When the two of you will be needed, it will be like Jesus and his church. That's why God hates divorce. Because they do not, that particular thing does not carry the image of God. In the image of God, he created them. Man, male and female. And the Bible says, and the two shall become one. And the Bible says, and they were naked and they were unashamed. Jesus wants us to come to the place where we understand our position in him. We sprang from him. When Adam was asleep and God took out that rib and formed Eve, that family did not really do well. But we came up to another order. When Jesus slept again, Jesus slept and we came out and we were bathed afresh. Now we have another life that cannot be beaten down. The seed of the woman must crush the head of the serpent. Jesus expects us to have dominion. And be fruitful in him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are still in the first love. Now I want us to do, read this Bible. We are about to finish. I'm almost concluding now. Some of us don't want to read this 
wengine tunaonanga hii 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 book tunaionanga tutakangi kuisoma but wengine tunaipenda sana songs of solomon chapter 5 wengine ukiambiwa when when have you ever read songs of solomon hapana hiyo ni ya watu wenye wame wameoa you see yet u kutoka leo utaisoma with a new revelation Songs of Solomon chapter 5 verse 2 I have come oops okay I sleep but my heart is awake it is the voice of my beloved he knocks saying open for me my sister my love my dove my perfect one for my head is covered with dew my locks with the drops of the night continue i have taken off my robe how can i put it again i have washed my feet how can i defile them continue my beloved put his hand by the latch of the door and my heart yearned for him continue i arose to open for my beloved and my hands dripped with my my fingers with liquid my on the handles of the lock continue i opened for my beloved but my beloved had turned away and was gone my heart leaped up when he spoke i sought him but i could not find him i called him but he gave me no answer Jesus is knocking he is very intentional about his bride. Jesus wants you to move from the place of just being a Christian to the place of being co-heirs with him. The place of marriage, the place of intimacy. The place where you appear you carry the image and the likeness of God. That's what Jesus wants. But some of us we've been asleep for too long, like what Songs of Solomon says. Jesus comes and shouts at the door, "Open for me at the gate." Not at the gate, at the window. "Open! Open! I want to come and dine with you." please may the lord give you understanding to what i'm saying because i i asked the lord to give us understanding today this one you cannot understand in flesh and blood please if you're thinking about rela- human relationship get out of that we are not even there this is a serious issue that jesus has for us it is deeper than anything a man can give Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So when the woman the lady here is the church she opens the door but the husband the groom has gone. Where were we go back to where we were verse 6. Go, go back please. what has happened there was no answer as seven now the watchmen who went about the city found me they are watchmen they are watchmen they struck me they wounded me the keepers of the walls they took my veil away from me i charge you O daughters of Jerusalem if you find my beloved that you tell him i am love sick today the spirit and the bride must say come today the bride must long genuinely 
for the Lord. Today, the bride of Christ must genuinely live for him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to raise your hands and just pray in the Holy Ghost for just a minute. This understanding you cannot receive it but by the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost for just a minute. Pray loud, pray loud. Holy Ghost, give us understanding. You cannot be able to love anyone. Let no one lie to you. You cannot be able to love if you have not received this love. You cannot be able to serve if you have not received this love. Each Somebody just pray in the Holy Ghost. Let this love be bathed in you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Because of sleeping, some of you have been beaten down. You've been crushed. You've been disappointed. Because when the lover of your soul was knocking, you failed to wake up and go and open the door. This has, is not necessarily for the people that are, are not born again. But in any situation, Jesus wants to be involved. In that decision, he wants to be involved. He comes and says, open for me, my beloved. Let me come see, show you how we are going to do it. In this matter, we will work it out with you. But you slept. You failed to open the door just in time. But here is an opportunity again. I tell you, you cannot be able to love anyone. You cannot be able to love anyone if you have not received the love of Jesus. You will always want to make a statement. You will always want to prove to people that you love God. Jesus help us take me to that scripture if I have no love I cannot be able to if you if I prophesy if I do all these things if I heal the sick <laughs> if I you know even give to the poor We must desire this excellent gift that comes from first us 
receiving it if we are if, if we are to be his followers we must receive him we must receive him and though i have the gifts of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and knowledge i and though i have all faith so that i could remove mountains but have no love i'm nothing And though I bestow on all goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, but have no love, it profits me nothing. This is the love of God. This is the love of God. Will you receive it? Jesus says, if you love me, if you want to know you love him, you will obey his word. Have you been a partial person? You know, you obey partially. Partial obedience is disobedience. It is not the love of God or for God. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. Whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In this, in this, in this, the love of God was made manifest among us. But God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfect. stand up on our feet. One of the best ways to receive the love of God is by laying down your life. Truly, truly laying down your life. Jesus says, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must deny yourself. You must carry your cross. You must follow him. You must be born again. This is the very nature of being born again. Anyone that loves the world or loves like the world is not of God. The love of the world is enmity to God. Lift your hands to the Father. Lift your hands to your love, the lover of your soul. This thing you cannot understand it emotionally. This is not romantic love. May the Lord help us. This is not something you receive like you receive from a young man or a young lady. This is of God. This can only be from God. In God and to God. It is from God. It can only be effective in God and can only be expressed through him. Oh, somebody lift your voice and pour your heart. Express your love. Let me tell you, genuine love will offend men. Genuine love for Jesus will offend men. Don't expect to 
people to praise you when you love Jesus genuinely. <laughs> Don't expect men to be happy with you when you love Jesus genuinely. Even your own man, parents, children, wives, husbands will not be able to understand because it cannot be done from man. It is from God in God and to God. Peter said, we've left everything. We've left our life, our wives. We've left our jobs. We've left our children. What is it for, in for us? This thing is not human based. It is not world based. This thing is eternal. This thing cannot be understood by a human mind. It is too big. It is too deep. This love is too deep. You think you've loved him just because you've come for the service. It is deeper than that. It is deeper. It is deeper. It is deeper. It is deeper. That love will make you make some very weird decisions that will not make sense to your people, to your friend, to your husband, to your wife to your children. Oh, you must love Jesus. You must love Jesus. You must love Jesus with your whole heart. You must love him with your very life, your whole life. Oh my God. These ones that never loved their lives, they, they poured their lives down. Their lives were poured. Uh, they were poured out. Oh my God. For they did not love their own lives. Today you must pledge your allegiance. Today you must love him like you've never loved him again. From today, your actions will spring from your love. The love of God to you and your love to him. When you receive the love of God, he empowers you to love him. For this Jesus is full of grace and truth. Thank you, Jesus. We just pray in the Holy Ghost for just a minute. Just a minute. One more minute. Mazole Father, give us understanding. Father, give us understanding. Father, if there's one thing you can give us today is understanding by your spirit. Help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. There are things that you expect us to do as a result of what we have received. Just as when you loved, you gave. There are things we are expected to do because we claim to love you. Because there are instructions you give us. Oh, for the sake of your agenda, for the sake of your will. We must not live for our own glory. We must live for your glory. We must live for your glory. We must live for your glory. You must be glorified, Jesus. We must decrease. We must decrease. You must increase in the name of the Lord Jesus. Increase in us, Holy Ghost. Increase in us, Spirit of Christ. Increase in us, Jesus. Zole I pledge allegiance. With all my strength, with all I, I will seek to honor His commands. I pledge allegiance. Oh, I 
Tell the Lord, take away the stony crown that is rebellious to you. Take away the stony heart that wants to do what I want to do. Oh Lord, take away this wicked, desperately wicked heart. Oh, that always thinks that what I desire is right. Take away, oh Lord, take away, take away. Take away this stony heart that is rebellious to your commands. That it is, it is very rebellious to your voice. Oh, whenever I hear your voice, I hear myself. I try and pretend like I've not heard your voice. But it has it was so clear. Where are you, Adam? Zakala Mandala Basaya. Lord, take away our stony hearts. Take away, give us hearts of flesh. Give us hearts of flesh, O oh Lord. Give us hearts to love you. 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 Zapala Baradaba. Empower us to love you. Empower us to lay our life down. Empower us, oh Jesus. Some of the things we expect to see in our generation, they will come up if we truly lay our life down. Some of the things we desire to see, the moves of God. It's just that God says if He gives you that, you will be lost. But when you die, yeah, God specializes in working with dead things. Things that cannot have a power of their own. Things that truly, truly have to be breathed by the Lord to be effective. Oh my God, my God, give us understanding. Zala pala bahandia. Zala palia bahandia. Zala palia kalababa. We need to hear testimonies at your workplace. People entering the office and begin to repent. Because you have died. When you enter that office, it is not you that has entered. It is Jesus and the whole of heaven. Anything that is of darkness gives way for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord floods that place. Zala pala bahata. Lepa kala basaya. Lepa payara bahaya. Father, the problem is not in the world, it is us. We are the problem. We are the problem, oh God. Help us. Work on us. Break us. Mold us. Mold us again. Mold us. Break us and mold us again. Oh yes, we've already made our own stuff. Oh, we have already made our towers of Babel. Oh my God. Oh my God, help us. Oh my God, help us. Le we already have our own gods in our hearts. They that we think that are happy when we do what we feel we want to do. But Lord, you are the father of all spirits. You are the father of all spirits. You are the father of all spirits. We come to you, O oh Lord. We came from you. We have nothing of our own to glory. We have nothing of our own to glory. Everything we have it is you that has given us. Everything we have it is you that has given us. Everything we have it is you that has given us. Zapaya Kaya. Why should we think that we've worked for the things we have? Why should we think we have worked for the things we enjoy? Why should we think, oh Lord, help us? We repent today. We come to our first love. We come to our first love. Some 
somebody cry to the Lord. I hear the spirit groaning. Oh, Rapila Baha, Zapala Baha, Zapalia Baha, Lapalia Baha, Zapala Baha, Zapela Baha, Zakala Baha, Dirazola, Zabala Baha, Dabakala, Zabara Dabagabosha, Rabagada Baha, Basa, Rebala Baha, Dialaha, Zabari Dabaka, Rabha, Rabasali Baha, Dialaha. Zepali barada bakora baba, reba sata la barada ba. It is true we forsaken our first love. It is true. We want to go back to the deeds we had with you in the first time. Oh God, oh Jesus, when we loved us. We loved you even more than we loved sleep. We loved you even more than we loved anyone else. We loved you even more than we loved all oh, recognition with men. We loved you more than we loved our giftings. Take us back to our first love. Oh, we loved you more than the success we have. We loved you more than that. You are more than that. You are more than that. You are precious. Oh, my beloved is mine. And I am his. You are precious than, more precious than that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Help us. Help us. I sense the Spirit of God so heavy in this place. The presence of the Lord is so greatly in this place. My beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most wonderful amongst thousands. Is Jesus the most beautiful thing that has ever happened to you? Is Jesus the greatest thing that has ever happened to you? Is Jesus the joy of your salvation? Oh Lord, oh Lord, help us. I want you as you go. The survey we took when we were beginning. Go look at it. I know some of you can write down more than what you wrote. The things you did when you first encountered the Lord. How you viewed life. The things that you consider spiritual that you were doing and now it seems like you want you don't have them go back to your first love the things you are doing now that don't form they don't even come close to how you are walking with the lord the first time you met him go back to your first love Go back to your first love. Go back to your first love. Go back to your first love. Go back. These things will go. These things will pass away. One thing will remain. Faith, hope, and love. Your relationship with the Lord is greater than anything else in this world. Your relationship with Jesus is far more important than anything else. You'd rather lose everything else if it is compromising your relationship with Jesus than have it and gain it all but lose him. 
What shall profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? It's a slow fade. It doesn't start boom, Aramocha. Go to that survey that we have done. Look at your life. Genuinely evaluate your life. Go back to your first love. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Pastor Fire.